this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this pretty cool pocket shawl. Now I do have it folded up because it's too big to put on my desk, but I will tell you some measurements. So without the fringe, it measures approximately 56 inches. Um, and then the 12, and then the fringe is adds another 12 inches on each side. Now you've seen me in the picture. I am five foot three, and honestly, I don't have extremely long arms. So if you want to make it bigger? That's fine. I'll give you to mul the multiple to make it longer um, to suit your needs. If you're taller or you have longer arms, you just chain to the length you know that 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 you would need. So it's easy to adjust that way. Let me go ahead and set my camera down. I'll give you a measurement of the pockets and the okay so up here is the collar so from the collar down to the the shell is about 18 inches wide and again you can make that wider if you prefer pocket let's check out the pocket size you can see that it does go at an angle so at the at its tallest point it's about nine and a half inches at its shortest point it's about six and a half inches and then it is approximately eight and a half inches uh, yeah about eight and a half inches wide so and like i said the fringe is 12 inches long on each side you can leave the fringe off you can make the fringe shorter you can use tassels you can do whatever you like remember it's your shawl it's going to be cool regardless so you guys want to go ahead and get started on this I'm excited to show you how to do it and please, please, I beg of you, do not be intimidated by this stitch. It's easy breezy. If you know how to do double crochets, um, single crochets, um, maybe you've never done a double crochet six together, but I'm going to show you how to do it because it's not hard. It's not hard. I know it looks very complicated. It's a very, very gorgeous stitch. And, but it's not hard. It's a four row repeat and you can do it. I know that you can do it. You can do it. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Okay, for this project, I used Lion Brand Mandela Roving. It is uh, classified as a lightweight three, but it's quite a thick lightweight three. So if you don't use this yarn, I might recommend you using a four, yarn, uh, four weight yarn. For this project but then again i will give you the multiple so you can um make it as the length as long as you want it to be um there are 400 and this is 100 acrylic and there's 415 yards in uh per cake so i color controlled mine and i'll show you how i take the cakes apart to do that um so and you can tell that i used on mine the dark color a lot that's on the edge more than I use any other color so therefore I went through um, five cakes but I didn't choose all of it five cakes like I have this much left of two of them and so because uh, I used to, I just used the outside of it so in all actuality so for my size, I actually used two full cakes and then I used the outside dark color of three other cakes. So let's just, I'm going to take a guess, count the fringe. If you're not using this yarn and you're, you know, if you're using the, if you're using this yarn and you want to do it like me, you're, you're going to need uh, five cakes of it. But you, like I said, you're not going to use them all. This won't go to waste. It'll go to other projects. Just because I use the outside doesn't mean that I won't use this for other things. But you'll need five in order to make it look like mine. But you definitely don't have to use this yarn. Now, if you don't want to use this yarn and you want to use your own different yarn, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to say that you're going to need, um, I'm going to, with the fringe, I'm going to guess probably... 12 it's gonna be a, a pretty wide range 12 to 1500 yards of a four weight yarn I'm sorry that's such a wide range but it's just hard to judge because I only use the outside layer of three cakes so um, that's that's about what you'll need and then I'm going to be using a size J which is a six millimeter crochet hook okay you guys ready for this 
not only am I going to show you how to crochet that shawl, I'm going to show you how to color control it too while I'm doing it. Now, color control, you don't have to use this yarn. You can actually use any yarn that you choose. But color control works best, best with striped yarns like this. Mandela Roving is one of my favorite yarns. It's very easy to color control. That's not why it's my favorite, but it does play a, play a part in it. But whenever I color control a striped yarn, I'll tell you, Mandela Roving works well for color control. Regular Mandela yarns work really well for color control. You can color control pretty much any striped yarn. Some are easier than others because some have longer stripes and some have shorter stripes. But regardless, I'm going to show you how to call it how, how I usually do it. So usually I deconstruct my cakes. So um, generally they'll come out in a clump. Now this being a roving style yarn, it'll have a tie. Should have a tie. Got the clumps. It's easier for me. Now I'm going to keep the same order that uh, these cakes go in for my pocket shawl. You can do a different order if you want. It's up to you. But see, I just pull them out like this. And you'll see there's a little tie there. Holds them together. Break it. And there's one collar. Now I'm going to pull out my next one. So it's a deconstruction to reconstruct. Now some people don't understand why in the world do I buy a striped cake if I'm just going to take it apart and do this with it. Well that's an easy, easy answer for that one. They don't make these in solids. This is my favorite yarn. If they made them in solids, of course I would buy the solid. I would buy the solids, and I wouldn't have to take apart the stripes. But since they sell them only in stripes, I don't. I like to color control. I have to take it apart. So that is a very easy answer to that question. Just because they don't sell it in solids. Here we go. Got one more here. No, I don't. Yeah, one more. Two more. How many colors is this thing? I think it's five. Yeah, mandala rovings are five. Pull this one out. Like that. And then I got one left. There it is. Now, that's how I will start my project. I'll start here, and then I'll do my row of this, then I will do the row of this, then I'll do a row of this, then a row of this, then a row of this, and then I'll start back over, row of this, row of this, row of this, row of this. And every time I run out of yarn, I'll just pull apart another cake, just like I showed you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on the pocket shawl. Remember, you don't have to use this yarn. You don't even have to use a striped yarn. You can use a solid yarn. Although I must say that the Harquin stitch does look better with um, a contract, uh, two different color yarns at least that contrast each other but it looks pretty in solid because I've seen it in solid and it's still pretty too um you can use variegated whatever you want to use but I'm, I was just showing you people have asked me this is what I do whenever I color control a yarn so let's get started all right so the Harquin stitch is done in a multiple of eight plus two so that means that your chain needs to be evenly divisible by eight and then you add two more to the base chain so um i have chained 200 which is evenly divisible by eight and then i'm going to add two more so i'm starting with a chain of 200 and two stitches now you can make yours any link to fit you. Remember, I did say I am 5'3". I gave you the measurements and everything. You might need, maybe you have longer arms than me, shorter arms than me. You just, what I do is just uh, kind of wrap my chain um, around my back and hold my arms down and see if that's about the right length for me. So that's how I go about measuring mine. So, Multiple of eight plus two. Now, once you get that done, if you're following along with me and you like my size, you think it's going to work for you, um, I chain 202, 202 stitches. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. And then we're going to work one single crochet in every stitch of this big old long chain. It's not a hard stitch. This is probably going to be your hardest row of them all. Just trying to keep your chain from twisting. It's a very uh, beautiful stitch even though it looks difficult as long as you can do like like I said double crochets togethers and stuff which even if you don't know how to do them I'll teach you how right now. You're gonna be able to do this. You can do it. So I'm going to continue putting one single crochet in every stitch for the length of my chain until I get to the end of row one. All right, I have made it to the end of row one. If you're following along with me, you should have a total of 200 and one stitches now. Now we're gonna start row two and we are going to chain one and turn our work. Now we are going to do a single crochet into this very, very first stitch right here. Like that. And then we are going to skip three stitches. So one, two, Three. and in the next one we're gonna work three double crochets into it so there's one two and three and then we're gonna do a chain of one and we're gonna go back into the same stitch again and work three more double crochets so there's one two and three now we're going to skip three stitches one two three and then we're going to single crochet into the next just like that and we're going to kind of repeat what we just did so again we'll skip three stitches again one two three and in the next we will work three double crochets a chain of one and three more doubles into the same stitch Like that. Skip three. One, two, three, and single into the next. So I'm going to repeat this pattern until I get to the end of the row. Skip three, and then in the next, it's three double crochets. Chain one, three more doubles into the same stitch. Skip three, one, two, three, and single into the next. So I'm going to repeat this pattern all the way until I get to the end of row two. All right, I have am coming to the end of row two, and you should be able to finish out a complete repeat. So I did my three doubles, chain one, three doubles. I have four stitches left. I'm going to skip three and single crochet into the last. Now I'm going to tie this yarn off and switch colors. I'll have some tails to be hiding later, but that's okay. That's what happens. Okay, so at the end of row two, if you're following along with me, you should have 25 of these sh uh, shells there. 
So I'm going to move on to my next color, which is, I'm like I said, I'm going in the same order that they are put in in the cake. So, but whatever, whatever yarn you're using, whatever order you want, I'm going to be using gray next. Okay. So row three is going to start the repeat. Rows three, four, five, and six are the repeat rows, but they're not hard repeats. So what I'm going to do, I haven't turned my work. I'm going to go ahead and start my new yarn into this last single crochet by pulling it up. This is a no-no. Pretend like you didn't see me do this, but I'm just going to tie a little knot here between these two ends. That way they don't come undone and I can undo it later and hide the tails. Or not undo it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to tie a loose knot there. There we go. Okay, so I started there in that first single crochet, my new yarn. I have not turned my work. But now I am going to chain one and turn my work. And we're going to start row three. Now we are going to go ahead and put a double crochet into that very first stitch that we just started our yarn into. Remember we turned our work and we start off with a double crochet like that. Now we're going to work a double crochet three together over the next three stitches. So that's these three right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to go into that next stitch and draw up a loop and yarn over and go through the first two loops on my hook. Yarn over and go into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops on my hook. Again, yarn over and go into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops on my hook. I should have four loops that remain. I'm going to yarn over and go through all four loops like that. And then I'm going to do a chain of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, with this chain seven still on my hook, I'm going to do a double crochet six together over the next six double crochets. So let's go ahead and begin. So we skip this chain one here. We don't do anything there. So we yarn over and go into the next double crochet. Draw up a loop and yarn over and go through the first two loops on your hook. Again, yarn over and go into the next double crochet. Draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops on your hook. Yarn over and go into the next double crochet, drop a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops on our hook. So we did the remaining three stitches of that shell. We skipped this single crochet and we're going to go into these next three double crochets over here. So we yarn over and go in through the next double crochet, drop a loop, yarn over and go through the first two, yarn over and go through the next double crochet drop a loop, yarn over and go through the next two, and yarn over and go through the last double crochet, which is six in a row, drop a loop, yarn over and go through the first two. You should have seven loops on your hook, yarn over and go through all seven loops like that. I kind of pull a, li a little bit tight like that. And I'm going to work a chain seven again. So basically, I'm just going to repeat from the chain seven. So I'm going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I will double crochet six together over the next six double crochets with this chain seven still on my hook. Remember, we do not go into this chain space here. We're only working in the double crochets. So it'll be these three double crochets. We don't do anything with the single crochet and we work in these three double crochets. 
So I'm going to yarn over, go into that first double crochet, drop a loop, yarn over, and go through the first two loops. And I want to do that six for the six double crochets. So that's one, two, three, and then we don't do anything to into that single crochet. We skip that for now come over here to these next three double crochets and go into the this one this would be number four the next one yarn over go to the first two that'd be five and the last one will be six seven loops on your hook yarn over and go through all seven I kind of give it a little tug and then we chain seven and repeat one two three four five six seven so i'll show you one more time we double crochet six together in the next six double crochets so we nothing in this chain space it's these these three double crochets nothing in this single crochet and then these three double crochets so we yarn over and go into the first with double crochet, drop a loop, yarn over and go to the first two. Yep, you have to do that six times. So that was one, two, and three. And then we don't do anything in that single. We come over to the next three double crochets. The next one will be four, five. Six, seven loops on your hook, yarn over and go through all seven, give it a little tug, and then you chain seven and do it again. And this is what I'm going to repeat until I get to the end of my row, and that's what it's starting to look like. Okay, I'm coming to the end of row three, and I did um, a my last double crochet six together that I could do. And I'm going to go ahead and do my chain of seven. And now I'm going to end by doing a double crochet three together over these last three double crochets to match the beginning where we started. So just double crochet three together. Uh, four loops on your hook yarn over and go through all four and then we're just going to go ahead and do a double crochet directly into the last stitch just like that now at the end of row three if you're following along with me you'll have 24 of the double crochet six together and two of the double crochet three together so two of the half of ones and um, 24 of the whole ones yeah so all right now we're going to start row four we're not going to change colors this round we are going to chain one and we're going to turn our work and we're going to do a double crochet into the very first stitch. Like that. And then we're going to put three double crochets into the top of this double crochet three together. So... Uh, right there see that you kind of see the top of it kind of where the chain starts that's what we're going to work in and we're going to put three double crochets in to that spot so there's one two and three like that now we got this chain space we have to deal with very easy to deal with you guys ready 
we are going to remember this the um chain space below down here that we didn't work into what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet into it so we go in front of this chain go into that chain space here down here from the previous row and then we go around put this chain space kind of like that and we go around it like that and single crochet and that locks that chain space right in place right where it should be all right and then we're going to kind of start our repeat so we're going to work into the top of this double crochet six together so we're going to work mm, kind of right here where the chain starts i guess right about there might be in a little bit different of a spot where we work there but that's fine right here is where we're gonna work from now on and we're gonna go into that and we're gonna work three double crochets so there's one two and three and then we're gonna chain one and we're going to work three more double crochets. So it's similar to what we did before. So that was three doubles, chain one, three doubles, right there kind of in the um, locking space of that double crochet six together. Now we're here at our chain again, and we need to single crochet down here into this chain space and lock that chain into place so again what we do is we go in front of the chain and go through that chain one space and then put i kind of just put the chain right there and pull our yarn back through the loop but you're also going around that chain space and just do a single crochet and now lock that chain down and then we're going to repeat so we're going to work right here in this little spot of the double crochet six together and we're going to work three double crochets one two three chain one and three more double crochets so this is what we're going to repeat for row four it's pretty easy and it's starting to make the, the stitch. Again, we're going to single crochet into this chain space down here with this chain. So just go right through the chain space. Hold that gray or whatever color you're using. I'm calling it gray because I'm using gray down there. Pull back through the chain space. Single crochet. And then we work into this little top of the double crochet six together. I think it's right here where the chain space starts. Go right into there and work three doubles, chain one and three doubles. And then we just repeat this pattern until we get to the end of the row. Just like that and that's what it starts to look like all right I'm gonna continue till I get to the end all right I'm coming to the end of round four I did my single crochet there in that chain space to hold this chain down now I'm at my last this is the double crochet three together so right here it's just a double crochet on the end and then you can see these one, two, three, double crochet three together. So we are going to end by doing three double crochets in the top of this double crochet three together. So there's one, two, 
and three and then we will put one double crochet into the last double crochet of the row and that'll end row four and I'm going to change colors now so I am going to clip my yarn and change colors so we'll look at it and see what we got here we'll have one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 24 whole or 24 of these uh, shells and then two half ones. And then we're going to start row five, which is going to be very similar, but it's just kind of opposite. So I'm changing colors and I'm going to start row five with my next color very pretty one so we'll start it the same way we did before okay so I am not gonna turn my work yet and I'm gonna start my new color in this in this uh, double crochet here that we just finished uh, um, at the end of row four and again between us just a little knot here. just a little knot Keep it between us. No one will know if you don't tell. Okay. All right. Now I will uh, later undo that knot and sew in my tails correctly. That's just to hold it still while I crochet. Okay. So for round five or row five, I'm sorry. What we're going to do is we are going to chain one and turn our work. Turn this big long thing over here. Okay, and we're going to start off by putting a single crochet into this very first stitch right here that we just started in. Like that. Now we're going to do a chain of three. One, two, three. And we're going to do the double crochet six together again like we did down here so remember we do it over these three double crochets not into this single crochet but these and then these three double crochets so with this this chain three on our hook we're going to yarn over and go into that first double crochet drop a loop yarn over and go through the first two loops and we want to do that over those over six double crochets so that was one two, three, skip that single and go to these three doubles over here. That would be number four, five, and six. And you should have seven loops on your hook yarn over and go through all seven and now we are going to start the repeat of the row we're going to chain seven one two three four five six seven so like i said it's really similar to the rows that we've already done we're just kind of starting and ending different so we are going to do the double crochet six together again so we don't go into this chain space. Remember, we do, we save that for later. We do these three double crochets. We don't go into the single, and then we work in these three double crochets. So with the chain seven on our hook, we're going to yarn over and go and do the first double crochet. And we're going to do our double crochet six together. So that was one, two, three don't do that single jump over here to the next double four five six seven loops on our hook yarn over and go through all seven give it just a little bit of a tug and then we chain seven pretty easy isn't it I know you guys can do it again 
double crochet six together over we start we do we skip this chain space here we do these three double crochets and then these three double crochets so with the chain seven on our hook we're going to yarn over and go into that first double crochet and begin so there's one two three jump over that single crochet don't work in that go to the next double four five six seven loops yarn over and go through all seven quick tug and then we chain seven and do it again so i'm going to repeat this pattern all the way until i get to the end of the row all right i'm coming to the end of row five here and i did have enough stitches here to do a full a uh, full double crochet six together so i'm going to go ahead and do that but since we're at the end i want to make it match the other side so i'm going to do a chain three instead of a chain seven and then i'm going to end by single crocheting into my last stitch here on the end and that'll end row five and you should have i believe 25 of these circles now okay we'll start row six row six we're going to keep the same color um row six is the last row of the repeat so we are going to chain one and get our work turned around here all right so we're going to put one single crochet into the same stitch right here so single crochet on top of that single crochet now we okay so we're going to skip this chain three and we're going to be working into the top of this double crochet six together so like kind of like we did before right there in that little spot and we're going to go into it and we're going to work three double crochets i bet you already know three doubles One, two, three, and then a chain of one and three more double crochets in that spot. Just like that. And now we're going to be working. Here's this chain from, before, from a couple rows ago. You see this chain space here? We got to remember we got a single crochet through that chain space. So go into that chain space and around this chain I kind of just hold it together and then single crochet both of those spaces together that chain space and the, the other space just like that so that locks that chain down and that's what we're going to repeat so we're going to come over here to the next um, double crochet six together right there into the top of it this little spot here is kind of where I go into I guess that's the right spot but and I work my three doubles. If it's not the right spot, it works for me. So <laughs> three doubles. And then you chain one and you work three more doubles into that same spot. So this is like what we've done before. Just like that. And then we come over here to this chain and we need to single crochet through here and lock that chain down at the same time. So go right through that chain space and around that chain seven and single crochet. So there we go. It kind of makes the little circles again. So that's what I'm going to repeat now all the way to the end of row six. All right, I'm coming to the end of row six. I just did a the uh, chain three or the three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets into that double crochet six together from the previous row. So we want to make this side match the beginning where we started. So we're just going to go ahead and skip this chain three, and we're just going to single crochet into the top of the last stitch. 
and that will end row six and I'm going to change colors now so I'm going to clip my yarn and you should have 25 of these uh, shells three double crochet chain one three double crochet okay so that's it now um it's just a repeat of rows three through six so a four row repeat three four five and six now if you're changing colors you want to change colors you know after you complete a circle i guess that's what i always say like do two rows change the color because two rows makes a circle other than the beginning we only did a half circle but from now on um if you're changing colors you don't have to you can make a solid still looks good solid but uh i'm i'm going to be changing every time i get a complete circle made and if you look in the comment section and it'll be the very first comment i'll pin it at the top i'll put time stamps of rows three four five and six that way you don't have to uh try fast forward and or re rewind in and trying to find out where, where to start again so the timestamps will be there. You can click on those and um, start repeating again. Right now, I'm going to change my yarn and I'm going to start for row seven. I'm going to start repeating row three. So three through six until we get our uh, shawl as big as we, or as thick as we need it to be. All right. So this took me a little bit longer than, than I intended, but I did get the uh, shawl part done. So I'm going to give you a quick measurement of it now because you can always make it bigger if you'd like. I'm also going to be putting a little bit of a border up here, maybe a couple inches. So keep that in mind. Um, but right now, my shell measures from the shell point here to the top without the border that I'm going to put on. Um, it measures almost 18 inches right now. Okay, and that is with a total of... 16 rows and that is counting that very first row of single crochet so 16 total yes 16 total okay so and now like i said i was going to put a border on it you know you need to choose which side um i said you can make it bigger if you choose if you want to keep continuing making it longer that's fine that's completely up to you Okay, but before I add pockets to it, I want to put a border at the top here. I'm going to make this my top. And I'm going to leave the shells that they are um, as the bottom of the uh, pocket shawl. So what you need to do is you need to look and you do need to determine which side you like better. Now both sides are very similar. But I actually like this side better. I don't know <laughs> they're both pretty nice I guess it doesn't really matter which <laughs> whichever side you like better um, you choose which side you prefer if I choose this side it's gonna make my end shells facing um, backwards but I kind of like the overall look of it here if I choose this side it will make the my final row, row of shells face upright, which is, of course, what I would want. I think I'm not really digging the way the um, double crochet is grasped on there. But anyways, you choose which side you like better, and then we'll start here at the top. Okay, I want you to figure out <laughs> which side that you, you like better. We're going to start up here at the top where we did our very first row of single crochet. What I'm going to do is some rows of double crochet back and forth um, just to create kind of an edge at the top. I'm not going to make it very decorative because the stitch itself is extremely decorative and I don't want to take away from that. So I'm just going to do kind of a plain border. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the very first stitch that we made or somewhere close to it. And I'm going to pull my yarn through. And chain one I'm gonna go back into that same stitch and I'm gonna do a double crochet now you can do this in any color you choose and I'm going to work one double crochet in every stitch across now remember we did uh, in the beginning when we made our we got that row of single crochet that's what we're going into So one double in each one of those stitches 
all the way across the top until you get to the other side. And I'll meet back up with you when I get to the end. Okay, now when you make it to the end of the row, all we're gonna do is chain one and turn our work. And we're gonna do double crochet again. One double crochet in every stitch. So we'll start off by putting a double crochet into that very first stitch there. And then we're just gonna work across putting one double in every stitch. Now we're gonna do rows of double crochet until we get our border at the top as thick as we want it to be. You know, you, you can determine that, um, how thick you want yours to be. Um, I'm not quite sure how many rows of double crochet that I'll do, but I'll let you know here in just a second. Now remember, it's just one double crochet in every stitch, and when you get to the end of the row, you just chain one and turn and do another row of double crochet until we get our border here as thick as we need it to be, or as thick as we'd like it to look. Okay, so I went ahead and done a total of three rows of double crochet. You can do more if you'd like, and then I went ahead and tied off. So, and then um, I'm going to hide any remaining tails that I have down the sides, both sides, and these tails. And then we're going to make the pocket, which I've already made on one side, so I can kind of show you what it's going to look like here. It's uh, an angled pocket there, you can see. And then I do have the long fringe, which is always optional. Some people like fringe, some people don't. But go ahead and take this time to uh, hide all your tails and then get your color that you want to use for your pocket ready. And we'll start on that. Okay, one thing I do want to point out with this stitch is when we did our starting chain and then we start working where we did like six double crochets together, it kind of shrinks your work. So you kind of have to give it a good stretching. I do anyways. I lay it out and I stretch it out um, a bit so this top layer lays flat. Now if you're, if you're a blocker, I, I don't block my work, but if you do block your work, this would be a good project to block because of this, these stitches tend to stretch up um, your starting chain, making it shorter, which in turn, when you start to put your edging on, um, it's not stretched, so it appears to be wavy, but in all actuality, it's actually the same size. So blocking would be probably ben beneficial to this project, but I'm not a blocker. I'm a lay it out and stretch it out type of person <laughs> so but anyways that's what you got to do you just got to give it a good stretch and then it'll lay it'll lay even all right let's go ahead and get started on that pocket okay for the pocket we're going to make two pockets exact same um, i recommend leaving a long chain at least 12 to 18 inches for sewing um, when you start off with your slip knot on your hook so go ahead and start off with the slip knot. Leave that big long tail there. That way we can sew it on. Sorry about that. A little bit later. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a chain of 32. Okay, once you get your chain of 32 down, we're going to go ahead and do a double crochet in the fourth stitch from the hook. So we count one, two, three. Four, double crochet into that fourth stitch and then we're going to work one double crochet in every stitch for the length of the chain okay once you make it to the end of row one of your pocket you should have a total of 30 stitches so what we're going to do is chain one and turn our work. We're going to go right back into that very first stitch there and double crochet. And then we're going to work one double crochet in every stitch, which is for row two, until we get to the end of the row. So you should have 30 stitches now. One double every stitch, and I'll meet back up with you at the top. 
Okay, I've come to the end of row two. And your last stitch on row two should go into the top of this chain here. And you still should have 30 stitches. Now row three, we're going to chain one and we're going to turn our work. In, and we're going to start decreasing now to make that little slant on the pocket. If you don't like the slant, you can just keep going across with the rows of a double crochet. But I'm going to do a double crochet decrease over the first and second stitch. So I'm going to yarn over and go into that very first stitch, drop a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops on my hook. Then I'm going to yarn over and go into the next stitch, drop a loop, yarn over, go through the first two loops on my hook. Three loops remain, yarn over and go through all three. And now I'm going to work putting one double crochet in every stitch until I get to the end of row three. All right, I've made it to the end of round three, and now you'll have 29 stitches because you took one away. So, or row three. So we're going to start row four by chaining one and turn one double crochet into that very first stitch. And then we're going to work one double crochet in every stitch for row four until we get to our last two stitches of the row. I'm coming to the end of row four and I've made it to my last two stitches. I'm going to do a double crochet decrease over those last two stitches. And you will have a total of 28 stitches now at the end of row four. So we're going to chain one and turn our work and we're going to begin row five. And we're going to begin row five since we're at the top here where we're decreasing down with the decrease. So going to go ahead and go into the very first stitch, draw up a loop, go through the first two, again go into the next stitch and do our decrease over the first two stitches like that. And then we'll continue down putting one double crochet in every stitch until we get to the end of the row. And you'll start to see a slight slant taking place. I have made it to the end of row 527 um, stitches now. So remember, the bottom is always straight. It's the top that we decrease. So for row 6, we are going to chain 1 and turn. Go ahead and double crochet into that first stitch. And then we put 1 double crochet into every stitch until we get to our last 2 stitches of the row. Okay, I'm coming to the end of row six and I have two stitches left. I'm going to go ahead and decrease over those last two stitches and I'll have a total of 26 stitches now at the end of this row. So since we're at the top, we are going to start row seven with a chain one and a turn and we're going to decrease over the first two stitches. And then we'll work our way down, putting one double crochet in every stitch until we get to the end of the row. Now I'm going to keep repeating this pattern in the same manner. Only going down, going down, only decreasing at the top, um, at the end of the row, the last two stitches. And then when you uh, chain one and turn, you decrease at the beginning of the next row, the first two stitches. But we never decrease down here. Now, I, um, every row will have one less stitch than the row before. And I'm going to continue doing that until I have 20 stitches left. On uh, 20 stitches left, we started with 30. We're going to decrease down to 20. And that should be a total of 12 rows. So remember, decreasing at the top not at the bottom until we get a total of 12 rows and 20 stitches okay so i have got my 12 rows done and i've made it down to 20 stitches and you can see the slant of the pocket so this will be the bottom and this will be the way your hand goes through i would leave a long tail again when you clip off here you never know you, you know it's good for sewing in okay so you want to make two the same and then i've already done one so we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to sew it on. 
So we're I'm going to use my yarn needle, my trusty yarn needle, and sew it on. Just make sure you get your piece good and stretched and stuff like that. Okay. So. I'm trying to make it where you can see what I'm doing because I don't have a lot of room. Okay, anyways. Okay, here's the top of my work. Right here. Here's the ridge, that the dark ridge that I put on. We want to sew it on to where the tallest part is closest to our uh, top of our garment. So, like this. Now, I sewed my piece on... You can use pens if you'd like to hold it down, like, but for some reason, I think I said it before, I got the smallest pens in the world and they never work. So I sewed mine on light, right along the, um, third, between the third and fourth row at the beginning, there's my first row of single crochet. Here's some shells and here's some shells, I think. Or double crochets together or something like that I'm going right in between there and then I'm sewing it up right across the bottom and then I'm sewing it up over here it should reach to about the middle of another row of shells so wherever you sew it just make you sure that you sew both sides you know at the same spot and like I said, pinning it down works the best. I can't do that at the moment. But, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start over here with this tail. Since, make sure though the tallest part of your pocket, if you did the slant pocket, is facing the top part of your work. Maybe if I fold this up, that might work out better. Yay, that's a little bit better. Okay, now sewing it on is easy. We just want to take our time and we want to be as neat as possible sewing it on so we don't really bleed too much through the other side of your work. So I'm just going to kind of follow this row, kind of go right in the row of that red there. Or whatever color. Mine's red so I'm just going to refer to it as red. Kind of right in the middle of it. And I just take it and I grab a piece from the top don't go all the way through um, your bottom piece so it don't bleed out the other side and then grab a stitch from up here pull through and that's what I'm gonna do all the way down you can um, go up and down it a couple times if you want to make it more secure sometimes I do that or go through the same stitch twice just make sure you're not going through the bottom half of your work I'll show you what I mean like right now here so here's my work here I want to make sure that when I grab the piece on the bottom I'm just grabbing a little top piece that way when I sew it together it's not bleeding through on the other side so you can't see no sew seam on the other side I guess I mean that's not super important because it's on the inside but still you want it to look neat as, as neat as possible so I would suggest trying to do that if you can that's why it just takes a little bit of time and patience but it's always worth it in the end just to take your time like I said, it's okay to go through the, sta the same stitch twice if you feel like maybe the first one didn't get it tight enough. So I'm going to go all the way down with this, doing this in the same manner, slowly and carefully. And then when I get down to the bottom, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to sew the bottom together like that. And then I still have this yarn tail over here that I can use. And I'll sew it up here. Leaving this up here open 
for our pocket. So let me show you on the other side how the bottom was sewn. It's just all sewn actually the same way. See, I just went down. The tallest part here is at the front edge of my work. And I just sewed it down that row of gray there you can see in the middle. And then I sewed it along the bottom there. I added some fringe, with the, which I'll show you how to do that. And then I sewed it along the middle there. And all that's left open is the top, the slant edge. So that's what you got to do. Just neatly sew on your pockets. Do both of them the same. Just make sure you're putting them in, in close as, as you can to the, the same spot. Um, you can try the shawl on and decide where you want your pockets. You don't necessarily have to put them at the same spot as me, but just make sure the high point of your pocket is the closest to the top of your um, neck. And then, um, then I'll show you how to put the fringe on if you want to do that. I'm going to quit. I'm, I'm going to quickly show you how I sewed up the bottom. I just held my pieces pieces together and I went around and around and around um, like this. So that's how I kind of sewed up the bottom. Figured I better just show you real quick. Doesn't have to be done this way, you know, whatever works best for you. But this is just the way that I chose to do it this time. So yeah, go ahead and finish. You sew the bottom up like that, and then you do your other side, and then we'll put some fringe on it. All right, pocket sewed on. It's fringe time. If you want to do the fringe, you can do the fringe however you want. You can make it as thick as you want, thin as you want, as long as you want, as short as you want. But I will tell you what I did for mine, and I'll show you how I applied it. Um, so I took the colors of the dark and the red and I took two strands of each of those and they are approximately I would say if I had to guess how about I just give you a real measurement two feet long okay and what I did is I put one you start from the this is my front of my work I put one where there's I tried to evenly space them as best as I could but I kind of put one at every color point at every whatever these are so I started right here and what you do is you take your hook it's easiest to take your hook and go through and pull them under and then grab them like this and then kind of even them out at the bottom like that and then pull them both through like that just like that and that's kind of what I did all the way down um, just trying to make them as even as possible. So I'll go to the next color and kind of just go wherever. Doesn't have to be exact. Let me look on the other side how I did that. Okay. Pull your hook through from the bottom. Pull your yarns underneath like that drop your hook grab your yarn your ring pull them even at the bottom as you know as best as possible you can trim them up later and then just take it put your hand through the ring grab these pieces and pull them through like that just like that and you continue to do this until you get all the way across now I went all the way across on the other side, even to my um, collar edge there. I put two on that. So you can do the same. You can add really thick fringe if you want. Some, some of these pocket shawls have like super, super thick fringe. And they're cool too. I have, I have another pocket shawl on my channel and it's got super thick fringe. So this one I didn't put quite as thick. And I don't know if I'll leave it this long or not. I'll have to check it out. But uh, once I'm finished. But just kind of try to evenly space out, space them out. Like I'm doing. Now I'll show you what you do once you get to your pocket there. Since it's been sewn on kind of 
already. Um, you grab your yarn. Um, I got too many. Okay. And let's see. I'm going to be going through this one. So you just kind of go from, I kind of take the colors from the bottom. So I'll be going through this red one here. So I'll be going through that orange one. And I kind of pull it up through the bottom of my pocket too. Like that. Pull them through. You can use tassels too. Tassels are always pretty on uh, pocket shawls, I think. So, so yep, you just evenly space out your fringe. As long as it's short, long or as short as you want. Or omit the fringe completely if you don't like fringe. Some people don't like it. I think it's cool. I like really long fringe too. It's my favorite. But to each their own. Everybody's different. So you do it to suit you because it's your pocket shawl, right? That's what I say. You do you, I'll do me, and together we'll both have beautiful pocket shawls that we each like. So I'm going to continue until I get fringe all the way across. Remember, I'm um, even going up um, to the panel, or all the way up here to the collar. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can fringe it however you want. Okay, it's finished. It's finished. Yay, I'm so excited. I think it turned out really good. It's a beautiful stitch. It really is. The pockets turned out nice. The fringe turned out nice. You know what? I think I'm going to leave it long. Now, some people say long fringe is a waste of yarn. Maybe, maybe. But people like long fringe. And to the people that like long fringe, like me, always remember, they bought the yarn. And if they want long fringe, they shall have it. I think it looks cool. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram if you make this or anything else. Or any yarn hauls you want to show me a picture of anything tag me on instagram hashtag bag of day crochet show me your pictures um and, and don't forget to check out my hundreds of other crochet tutorials and lots of yarn talk too in case you're just a knitter and you want to talk about yarn i like to talk about that too thanks everybody for watching have a good day thumbs up don't forget to thumbs up